Hello, and welcome to a millinery product review video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London, and today I've been sent some PR. I'd like to say a big thank you to Karina, who has sent me her millinery stiffener products to review. In this video, I'll give you my honest opinions about how the product works and also how to use it correctly. Now, Karina did warn me that she sent it to me in recycled packaging, and I think this must have been an old shoebox. Lovely note. Thank you and have fun. I think what I've been sent is the sample set where you are given the various different stiffeners in their different strengths. So, what have I got? I've got a few tricks. Caratex, Hi, and a cleaner. Oh, there's some more things in here. Some brushes. These are very special brushes. We'll get onto these in a little bit. Durtex. And extra 36. I'm very glad that they've been sent in a shoebox because I can now reuse the shoebox to put various millinery ribbons in. So it comes with a handy leaflet that tells you the applications, the safety advice. What's very useful in this leaflet is it tells me what percentage of the active ingredient is in each of these different stiffeners. Let's talk a little bit about all the different applications for these various strengths. First off, we've got Futrex at 25% is to be used on lighter textiles and materials. It combines a soft firmness with flexibility. It is recommended for felt hats, lace and finer textiles as well as knitwear. Caratex at 30% is good for medium to thick woven fabrics and textures. It's especially good for denim and linen. In millinery terms, it's perfect for adding firmness to straw without added gloss. Use it on paracisal, cinnamon, paper, raffia, visca, and even leather. You can also apply it to veiling and lace. Pie at 50% is intended for thick fibre structures or tightly woven fabrics. It can be used to make textiles water resistant. It creates a flexible rigidity and provides dust repellent qualities. It can be used on straws, but it will add a gloss to their surface. Durtex at 100% is the best concentration for waterproofing. Use it to make a hat base out of lace or reinforce your buckram to make it super rigid. For uses outside of millinery, it can be used to reinforce ballet shoes and even treat boat sails. The Extra 36 solution was developed with Bridget Bailey. It contains 140% active ingredients, so it's super, super, super strong. Use it in small quantities for detailed work. Here is the cleaner. You can use it to thin out each solution by adding a maximum of 25%. For example, if you dilute the extra 36 with 10% cleaner, you will get the Durtex solution. But don't go over the 25% as this will damage the formula. Also use the cleaner to spot treat over stiffened areas and to clean nozzles of spray bottles as well as jar lips and lids. Let's talk about the brushes. Why are these brushes so special? Well, they are not synthetic brushes. Oh my goodness, they feel so soft. Wow, I don't think I've ever felt a brush this soft. And it's probably this soft because it's made using pig hair. And I know that can sound a bit not right in the modern times, but once again, like a lot of millinery equipment, pig hair is a millinery byproduct. So it's come from excesses from the food industry. One of the reasons that the pig hair brushes are going to be better than the synthetic ones is because this stiffener is methanol based and methanol can curl the ends of synthetic brushes. So some of my old brushes that I used to use with various chemical stiffeners, the ends of them have gone a bit 
funny and curly and hard and brittle and just not very nice at all and it's difficult to keep reusing them, but these ones should stay nice and straight. You'll also notice that these are flat brushes, not round brushes like I used to use before, so I'm looking forward to seeing how these would work. You'll notice that I have got five brushes, not just one, but five. Why would I need five brushes? Well, it's because I don't want to transfer dyes from one hood to another. Essentially, I will be sticking to the same system as for clothes washing. One brush for whites only, one for navies, purples, so anything dark, one for pastel shades, that would be baby blues, peaches, sherbet yellows. One for plain blacks and the last one for vivids and brights. I think the most exciting thing to do is to actually go and test some of this. So what I'm going to do is to set up some pages with samples of felt and straw and then I'll test a little bit of each of these on those and then we'll come and evaluate those once they're dry. The way I'm planning to work through the samples is from the weakest solution of Futrex at 25% to the strongest solution of Extra 36 at 140%. And the sixth sample will be the methanol cleaner applied over Futrex to see if it can take the stiffness out. This is useful for when you've over stiffened spots on your hoods. I will be using one brush for this application. The only rule is to not mix brushes between material colours, but you can use the same brush through all of the stiffness solutions. I've now stiffened my samples. Let's assess them. Here is the felt sample with Futrex. It is definitely a good stiffness. Now, I have to admit, I am already very familiar with Futrex as a stiffener because it has been a favourite of mine for a while, even before I got sent the samples for review. We'll compare the Futrex with an unstiffened sample. This is unstiffened and this is stiffened. It's labelled as 25% of the active stiffening formula and that is exactly how I would describe it. Compared to the unstiffened felt, this does feel exactly 25% stiffer. I hope that makes sense. Then I've got the Karatex sample. Here is where the stiffness really jumps up a notch. You can really feel that it's a lot harder. This is the Futrex. This is the Karatex. If I do that same S motion, that point of, oop, that point of flopping is very different to on the Futrex. That's much harder to flop. It wants to do this S-bend, whereas this is kind of bending like, um, like a thick cardstock pie which is up a stiffness level. This is 50% active ingredients. So comparing the pie to the Karatex. Now, personally, I think this is getting too stiff for felt, for me anyway. Maybe the one place I would use this is a visor cap or something like a really small brim that really needs to be rock solid. And I wouldn't recommend going up further than pie if you're still looking for some, some flexibility. Because once we move on to Durtex, this is... <laughs> rather hard. This no longer bends in that S wave at all. This is now as thick as a cardboard box. This is the extra 36. And it's 140% active ingredient, which is more than 100%. I'm not quite sure how that works, but that's what it says on the label. I don't think I've applied it very well because it was such a thick and syrupy formula. Let's get my little tester pot out. If I shake it up, you'll see that it's much thicker than the Futrex. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake the Durtex and then I'm going to shake the Futrex and what you can see, hopefully, is that in the extra, the bubbles that are much frothier, there are very many more of them. Now in the Futrex, the bubbles disappear much faster, so it's a much more liquidy formulation than the viscose Durtex. Now, the other thing about the Extra 36, which I think it must be my mistake, is that on the felt you can see, if I do this with my nail, it's drawing lines in the felt. And what this is, is that the stiffener is still on the surface, it hasn't really penetrated. And I think that's my mistake. What I should have done is, with the brush, brushed a lot more and just kept working it in and working it in and working it in. And I think this is one of the reasons why I really like the Futrex for the felt, is you don't have to work it in as much as one of the thicker formulas. With the Futrex, just a few brushes is enough, but we'll test that on a proper capeline later. For my last experiment in the felt, what I did was covered a whole square in the Futrex, and then I thought I'm going to use the methanol cleaner to see if I can unstiffen it because sometimes if you stiffen it badly you'll end up with a patch that's a bit hard and it ruins the whole feel of the hat and you just need to brush that little bit of hardness away and to do that you would use the methanol cleaner and the methanol cleaner side even though it's still a bit damp it's definitely lost that stiffness. It's not gone back to its original state of complete, complete floppiness, but it's close enough that actually, maybe if the Futrex is a 25% stiffness, then this is about 15. Next up, I've got straws, and I've done them exactly the same way as the felt, except for one extra step, which was to iron them with a hot, dry iron afterwards, because that's how I would work with block felt and the reason I've done that is to check the shine level. Before we check the shine level let's have a look at the stiffness. This is the Futrex. The straw is still able to move on its weave. This was the original. It's not a very good quality hood. This is just for testing purposes. But I would say that the Futrex it's given it some body. Straw isn't particularly wobbly to begin with, so it's not going to need a lot of stiffening, but the Futrex isn't very far removed from the original state of the straw. If I do the S-Bend test, this is it with stiffener, and then this is it without stiffener. It's very similar, very similar motion. Let's move on to the Karatex. That feels much better. It, it definitely feels a bit like a cartridge paper. This is the flexibility in the weave of it unstiffened. And then this is the flexibility stiffened. It's definitely got a little bit more resistance once it's stiffened than this. So I think this is nice. Let's try the S-Bend test. Oh, that really doesn't want to bend. It doesn't want to bend at all. So I would say when you're trying to pick a stiffener, don't over stiffen. It's always best to under stiffen. So I would say that Karatex, for me, for my preferences, this is where I'd stop. However, sometimes it's really nice to have a shiny finish to the straw. And that's where all the rest of the stiffeners come in. The Pi, Durtex, and the Extra 36. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shine a light onto them. And as I'm shining the light, we can have a look at how shiny is that. Now, bearing in mind, these have been ironed, so they're going to be slightly shinier than if you leave it unironed. So if you wanted a stiffer straw that's not as shiny, what you would do is you would shape it first and then apply stiffener on the inside. Whereas what I would normally do with straw is block the straw and apply stiffener on the right side. This is the original. This is the pie. From this angle, you can see this is reflecting a bit more light than the original. Then I've got the Durtex. That's even shinier than the pie. 
and then the extra. I have to say, I can see more shine than the camera is putting across, but the extra is definitely the shiniest. If you think of um, Swiss Starbright braid and how shiny that is, this is a very similar level of shine. The extra 36 is reflecting some light from my lighting in this room and the other two are reflecting definitely less. So if you want something really shiny, go for the extra 36. But what does the stiffness feel like? Let's do the S-Bend tests. This is the pie. Ooh, as I bend it, I can hear it crunching. Let me take it to the microphone. Oh, that's very crunchy. You really, there is, there is absolutely no flexibility in this because as soon as you bend it, it's going to hold this shape. So it was straight before. This is one I haven't done it to yet. This is the Durtex and this is the pie. I've bent the pie, I haven't even pinched it together. If I pinch it together, that's now going to hold that crease. That's how stiff it is. Let's see if the Futurex will do that. Look at the difference there. That's the Futurex in my left hand, and this is the pie in my right hand. That's a very different bend that they're holding. In fact, we might as well try this with the Karatex now. Let's bend that in half and pinch it. Look at that, that's a perfect illustration of the stiffness levels of these straws. Might as well do the same with Durtex. Let's do the S-Bend first. Oh, listen to this. And this is how it bends. Let's pinch that. Oh, that needed a bit more pressure to pinch. And then the extra 36, which actually has a very pleasant feel. Mmm. I don't think I like the shininess, but actually I really like how strong this feels. Oh, <laughs> this is actually really hard to bend in half as well, so if, if this is really going to crunch. There it goes. Pinch that in half. Look, that's your progression. 25, 33, 50, 100, 140. You can really see the differences there. Now, I've done the same thing as I did for the felt with this one. I've got Futrex and then the Methanol Cleaner on the other side. And I think this has worked a bit better than on the felt, actually, because you can really see this side is super stiff, and then this side is kind of back to being normal. I've decided to try it on some velvet. This is my velvet, and I'm very surprised. You can see where I didn't put stiffener and where I did put stiffener. This is how I applied it, going with the grain. And so it's coated just the backing. And what it's created is a vintage feeling velvet. So if you're making a velvet covered hat and I need to try this now, this is going to be perfect because it's going to keep its shape when it's blocked. So the way I'd make a velvet covered hat is I'd make a buckram base and then in the past I'd just stretch the silk velvet over the top and I didn't want to stiffen the silk velvet because last time I tried doing that I used a water-based polyvinyl alcohol solution and that soaked through into the nap of the velvet and it became crispy and lifeless and lost its shine. Whereas this velvet, as you can see, it's still shiny it's flexible. Let me show you the original. This is the original velvet. This is how soft and supple it is. And this is the stiffened velvet for comparison. That's pretty incredible. And the reason why I'm so excited about this velvet is I have a few vintage velvet hats in my collection, including the 1950s Soviet hat that I'm wearing at the moment. And they have a very special type of velvet that they're made with. The velvet has a backing that stops it from draping like, like this one and makes it all stiff like this one. And I'm not really sure why that's a plus because I haven't tried it yet, but now I'm really excited that I have the opportunity to try that. So that's on the to-do list now. The next thing to do now is to actually stiffen some hoods and cape leans. I'm going to start with a hood that I don't care for much in case it goes wrong. This is a merino wool felt hood in the colour sand. 
you may remember it from my Jackie Kennedy inauguration hat video. I'll go over some general advice and instructions first and then I'll talk about the correct application method from the next hood. Make sure you're wearing all the safety gear and your space is well ventilated. Shake the jar. The ingredients that make up the solution are all clear, so always shake the bottle before pouring out. You only need about 1cm worth of stiffener in the bottom of the jar at any one time. Once you've used the brush, there is no need to clean it, just leave it to dry. It will re-soften next time you dip it into the mixture. Before trying this out on another hood, I thought I'd add some stiffener to an already blocked hat. This purple one is from my Bow Batons video. It needed some extra firmness as it isn't wired. It was super easy to apply the stiffener while the brim was resting on the block. The wide flat brush was the perfect width for this task and I think it literally took me only three minutes. Now that I'm feeling a little bit more confident, let me tell you about the correct application method. This is a vintage fur felt melusine in sky blue. Keep the hood the right side out and put a pin into the centre top and bottom. This marks your starting point. Submerge the bristles, allowing the solution to penetrate all the way up the brush, and then push it up against the sides of the jar to get rid of the excess. Then brush the stiffener on using linear motions, increasing the pressure with each stroke to work the stiffener into the felt fibres. What do you think of this method versus the circular method from my previous stiffening video? Which one do you prefer? Leave me a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video. Next up, I'm stiffening this giant black wool felt cape clean. I'm doing this in the exact same way as for the hoods. I found this method a little harder on the cape clean, perhaps because it is black or maybe because of its giant size. It was difficult to see if I had already covered an area and there was a lot of area to cover. But perhaps this is just practice. I'll have to try this on more capelines to figure it out. It's been about an hour since I finished with the stiffening process. Let's evaluate the results. I'll start by working backwards from the large black wool felt capeline. The crown has stiffened exceptionally well, but the brim feels a little flimsy. Now this could be because of its size, because it is absolutely ginormous, but what that does mean is that I can still block the crown, and then when it comes to blocking the brim, I can just brush some stiffener on later once I finish blocking it. Speaking of brims that needed extra stiffening, this is my upturned brim from my bow batons hat. And if I take it off the block, that came off very easily. Oh, it's now definitely the same stiffness as the crown. I am very pleased with that. And there's no marks on the inside. The reason I say that is because with some stiffener brands, you can end up with like a white cast if you've put too much stiffener on and it's not penetrated into the fibers. But with this one, it's all good. Yes, I'm now very happy with the robust brim. Moving on to the light blue vintage Melusine. I was so worried I was going to mess this one up, but I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. It has got no gaps in the stiffener anywhere. The way you test for that is to pop it on the table and just, this is the motion with the hands. Check for any empty spots. No, it's definitely the same stiffness all the way down even into into the brim as well and here's the one i started with which was the sand merino wool felt cone i wasn't too confident in my technique when i started with this one and i was worried that i was going to end up with a heavy buildup of product in the center top and that the sides weren't going to be nearly as stiff but actually it's turned out really well the tip with the 
pin in the top and in the side really helped because I could really see where I started my straight line and then I went all the way around. My observations about this straight line type of stiffening method is that it was definitely a lot faster than the round in a circle type method that I've already shown in a previous video. This took me about 10 minutes to stiffen, whereas the previous crown stiffening method with the round rubbing took me about 20 minutes, so I'm very pleased to be saving time here. I also really loved using the flat brush. It was so easy to brush the stiffener on and because it left wide trails where I could see where the stiffener was, it made it really easy to not repeat sections where I'd already been. All in all, I would definitely say that the Futrex was my favourite level of stiffener at the 25% range. It's given it enough body to hold its shape, but it's not hard enough to be like a helmet. Now, obviously I haven't tested it on any straw caplings because it's not the season for straw. So I'll have to figure out some designs for the summer and try it then. But if I was to make a decision, I would go for between Caratex and Pi. I thought the Futrex was definitely too diluted for the straw. It just didn't add anything to the straw structure in itself. And the Caritex was, I think, perfectly stiff enough. But for a ladies summer straw, I would probably go with Pi. I guess what's left for me to say is that I really recommend these stiffeners. And what's been a real eye opener for me are the brushes. If you don't have a brush like this, you really need to go and try one. Once again, thank you to Karina for sending me this lovely PR package. That's all I've got for you this week. See you next time. Bye.